Whenever they release a new set, Mark Rosewater, the head designer of Magic the Gathering, releases a teaser. And then whenever he releases those teasers, I like to go through them and base predictions off of them. So here we are with Commander Legends, Bowler's Gate, a Magic the Gathering and D&D crossover set of Wizards of the Coast production, TM. First up, we have some things we can expect. We have a new mechanic that feels apropos for D&D, and it makes use of a new card type. This has to be Party. I know a lot of people were disappointed Party wasn't in the last D&D set, but like, Party just came out at that point. I feel like now we've had enough time, Party can come back. Also, not a big fan of this set that feels very gimmicky, getting a new card type added to Magic. A card capable of making an ox, a boar, or a goat. I'm glad to see some farmer representation in Magic the Gathering now. Either that or this is like some guy who's like trading these stuff away. The word seven appears on two cards and the word nine appears on one. This is the type of stuff you can only really pull off with a commander set. And I'm totally here for it. A new colorless legendary artifact token named Volo's Journal. So we've already had Volo before and based on the lore this probably is going to care about creatures which means it's likely based in green or the card that makes it is based in green, which just annoys me a lot because green used to be this thing that couldn't get artifacts at all. And now green seems to be getting everything it could never get. A 10, 10 creature with flying and trample that you can cast for one green. Well, green gets flyers too, apparently. Green has become like the new big bad in magic. A lord for demons, devils, imps, and tieflings. I always love to see tribes that don't have a lot of support get more support and i also like the inclusion of tieflings here they could have done this card two different ways they could have had it just care about tieflings which would have sucked because this card would have been okay for this set and then just not relevant outside of this set or they could have had it care about everything else except for tieflings at that point you're just kind of missing the true flavor of the D, &D set the character we got lots of complaints about not being in adventures in the forgotten realms gets a card i have some experience with DD. i used to play a moderate amount and I follow critical role. I know almost nothing about the lore. I'm not even gonna try to guess. Three legendary creatures that are gods. More cards for the gods deck. I'm always interested to see how new planes deal with gods and what they're like, but I don't like them freely throwing around the creature type. A card that enhances all creatures with mana abilities. So more help for green ramp, great. A spell that can copy something X times. I was thinking this was gonna be like X's in the mana cost, but with this being a commander set, a thing they like to do in commander is like it counts off of how many times you've cast your commander from the command zone or something to do with that. Next we have some rules text that will be showing up on cards. This spell costs one less to cast for each opponent you're attacking. I'm very happy with this card. Board stalls are one of the biggest reasons why commander games can go long. So anything that can make a commander game like speed up is better. And not to mention this is likely in red or white or both, which are two colors that could always use help. That artifact becomes a 0-0 homunculus artifact creature with flying. Well, I guess I have to revisit my homunculus deck. This card has to be blue. Whenever you cast a spell you don't own. Now I know this card has to come with like a bunch of other text, but this alone scares me. If you control neither creature, draw three cards. I think this has to be a very chaotic effect or it's a group up effect. Either way, I'm happy they're both getting card draw. You don't lose the game for zero or less life. These cards are always entertaining. I just hope nothing is too busted. Tokens you control have tap. People will instantly go to creature tokens for this and yeah, that'll, that'll work, that'll be good. But I think where the real thing is at is treasure tokens. It doesn't say token creatures, it doesn't say creatures, it just says tokens. So treasure tokens can tap to do whatever this is. And I don't think it takes much to make this very broken. Where X is the total mana value of all dragons you control. What is a Dungeons and Dragons set without dragons? And what are dragons without just massive CMCs? Put a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. Now I think this card can go two ways. If this card is a piece of removal in commander, that's hilarious and mean. If this is supposed to help you out in any way, this card's very bad. You may cast your commander from the command zone without paying its mana cost. Casting your commander from the command zone isn't necessarily new, but it's just not explored that well, and I hope they don't go too buck wild with it. Now here are some flavor words. We saw flavor words in the last D&D set. They're basically words that are just there to show you what it would be like if you were playing the game of Dungeons and Dragons and this happened. So maybe there's like a spell or maybe there's an action and you'll see. Devour intellect. With how intelligence is displayed in Magic the Gathering, this is either hand attack or this is mill. 
Homunculus Servant. I think this lines up with the card earlier that makes an artifact into Homunculus. Either that or it makes a token. Bigby's Hand. This is a versatile spell in D&D, so I'm not sure how they're going to pull it off here. I feel like it should be like Reach or Flying or both. I don't know how both works, but or both. Gathered Swarm. This has to be something that makes a bunch of tokens. Avoidance. Looking at avoidance in D&D, &D, it looks like it's going to be some kind of like blink effect or something that gives itself hexproof at instant speed, but I can also see them going the route of making this like an unblockable thing. Vicious Mockery. This deals damage in D&D, &D, but I feel like this should be the type of thing that like gives minus X minus X. Blood Drain. I don't think you can make a card that says both blood and drain and not have this be like a expropriate type black or white or black white card mantle of inspiration so something to do with bards it's probably a buff it could have to do with dice rolling if dice rolling is back but i really hope it isn't and i really don't think it is animate chains this feels like a blue effect that makes an artifact into an artifact creature death ray this feels like it could be a lot of things it feels like it could be one of those debuff cards it feels like it could be like a burn spell or it feels like it'd be just a straight kill spell finally we have some creature type lines if we have a legendary creature halfling knight Halfling is the type of creature type that I feel like they should finally start bringing into actual magic proper. Maybe merge it with Kithkin. Legendary creature, Tiefling Barbarian. They made Vikings into Berserkers in the Kaldheim set, so why are Barbarians their own thing? I feel like it's too similar of a concept. It's like how Warlocks and Wizards are both in magic. Legendary creature, Gith Warrior. I had no clue what a Gith was before this. Looks like just a like, more slender, lean orc. Legendary creature, Dragon Peasant. I know the idea behind this is that it's a dragonborn that just is a peasant, but I like to think it's like a dragon with no horde. Legendary creature, Vampire Elf Rogue. I feel like we've all, at one point in our lives, sat down at a D&D table and someone is this type of character. They're super edgy. Their parents died in this tragic backstory incident. They work alone. They have a hood up. All this kind of edge stuff. That's what I get from this card. Legendary creature Bear Warrior. I love this creature type line and I want to make this in D&D. Legendary creature Devil Noble. Devils and demons aren't that different within magic itself. I wonder if they stepped away from using a demon here because of Capenna. Legendary creature, human boar. Normally creatures are a species and then a occupation. And then when you mix two species, it gets really messed up. And it's even more messed up that one of them is human. Legendary creature, cat devil. All cats are devils. Legendary creature, elephant angel. This is possibly the best creature type line I think I've ever seen in any magic card ever. I hope the rest of the card doesn't disappoint. So that's it. This set should be fun. The last Commander of Legends set was really fun, and the last D&D set was actually okay. It's the type of thing where it's close enough to being in-universe magic that I feel like it doesn't feel that weird. So, Commander of Legends Baldur's Gate, what do you think? What are you hoping gets reprinted? Remember to check out the eye and check out that giveaway. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to bolt your birds.